darkness of these days we turn to you we remember all the promises you've made you will lead us from the shackles of our sinfulness you will show
would like to welcome all of you who are participating in this Mass via live streaming or who may see it later this afternoon, evening, or tomorrow. I thank you for joining us as we begin this most solemn triduum uh, in which we commemorate the dying, the rising of Christ, and also the institution of the and the giving of the great gift of the Eucharist and the priesthood that serves you, the people of God, by providing the Eucharist for you and reconciliation and forgiveness of sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. peace be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God. I offer this Mass for all of you here in the Diocese of Amarillo, for all who are working to care for those who are ill, for those who have died that they may have eternal life, and for those who are suffering that they may receive care and comfort. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading, a reading from the book of Exodus. 
the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. The same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you thus. When I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good?
second reading a reading from the first letter of saint paul to the corinthians brothers and sisters i received from the lord what i also handed on to you that the lord jesus on the night he was handed over took bread and after he had given thanks broke it and said this is my body that is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way also the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the death of the lord until he comes the word of the lord thanks, thanks be to god be with you our reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord before the feast of passover jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the father he loved his own in the world and he loved them to the end the devil had already induced judas the son of simon the scariot to hand him over so during supper fully aware that the father had put everything into his power and that he had come from god and was returning to god he rose from the supper and took off his outer garments he took a towel and tied it around his waist then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples feet and dry them with a towel around his waist he came to simon peter who said to him master are you going to wash my feet jesus answered and said to him what i am doing you do not understand now but you will understand later peter said to him you will never wash my feet jesus answered him unless i wash you you will have no inheritance with me simon peter said to him master then not only my feet but my hands and head as well jesus said to him whoever had bathed has no need except to have his feet washed for he is clean all over so you are clean but not all for he knew who would betray him for this reason he said not all of you are clean so when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again he said to them 
Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that, as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 8, as the author sings, What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him little less than a god, crowned him with glory and honor. The world of today reveals itself at once as powerful and weak capable of achieving the best or the worst. The tensions disturbing the world of today are in fact related to a more fundamental tension rooted in the human heart. In man himself, many elements are in conflict with each other. On one side, he has the experience of his many limitations as a creature. The present challenge of the coronavirus COVID-19 is a concrete example of this today. A few days ago, I went to the, get a few groceries. I could not believe what I saw. The parking lots were full of cars. There were no baskets to be found. People were hoarding food and cleaning items as if the end was at hand. No disinfecting items were to be found anywhere. Man finds himself in his limitations as a creature. But on the other side, man knows that there is no limit to his aspirations and that he is called to a higher kind of existence. We can go to the moon but we can't seem to control a simple virus. Behind this are lurking the most fundamental questions people are, or people are seeing them anyway, in a keener awareness. What is man? What is the meaning of pain, of evil, of death? which still persisting in spite of such great progress that humanity has made. What will come after this life on earth? The church believes that Christ died and rose for all and can give man light and strength through his spirit to fulfill his highest calling. First bishops of our country, when they got together in Baltimore for a council, taught us this. God created man to know, to love, and to serve God in this world and enjoy everlasting happiness with God in heaven. Teresa Avila, many centuries later, or excuse me, earlier, taught that no human person can achieve their fullest potential that God intends for him unless Christ is part of his life. Neither can that person achieve happiness, peace, contentment, fulfillment of life without Christ, without God. Paul said the same. Pope Benedict basically said the same. In the incarnation, God created a place in man for God. 
Man is incomplete without God, he taught. And then at the ascension of the Lord, God created a space in himself for man. Man hungers for something. Man hungers for goodness, for good in this world. But God is the only true good. Hence, St. Ambrose wrote, let us hold fast to the good that is God with all our soul, all our heart, our strength, and so enjoy his light and see his glory and possess the grace of supernatural joy. In truth, man really at his deepest hungers for truth. Hence, he hungers for Christ, who is, as he himself said, the way, the truth, and the life. Even King Herod hungered for truth, which is why he loved to listen to John the Baptist. He just could not accept it or live it. Just as man thirsts for the water of Samaria and the wine of Cana, through the gift of the Spirit, man hungers or the wheat that becomes the bread of life that Christ offers us in the Eucharist at Mass. In the Eucharist, we listen to the Word of God in all His richness. Then the bread is transformed into the body of Christ and the wine into the blood of Christ. It is sacramentally changed in substance. It only looks like bread but is the body of Christ. And the wine appears like wine, but in fact is the blood of Christ. It is the heavenly food and spiritual drink that we crave. It is the bread of life that literally gives the one receiving this food and drink a share in Christ's own divine life. We share eternal life with God and that unique food and unique drink slowly transforms us into what we receive. With ordinary food, we only nourish the body so that it has energy to sustain itself and do the good works Christ calls us to. The bread of life came down from heaven, but it nourishes something else our soul, our spiritual life, our innermost being. O Christian, St. Augustine said, you are what you eat. Ash Wednesday always reminds us of two aspects of Lent that we should never forget. First, we're very fragile beings. Our bodies were made of the very earth, the dirt, that we walk on every day and that we use to raise our food. Remember you are dust and to dust you will return. Our bodies are weak. Our mind is also weak after the sin of Adam and Eve. And just as our bodies need nutrition and hydration, so also our souls need the strength that only the grace of God can provide. <clears throat> The Eucharist, St. Thomas Aquinas said, is medicine for the soul that is weak, but not in mortal sin. The Eucharist is not a prize for the perfect, but a powerful medicine and nourishment for the weak. Man hungers for something else. An intimate encounter and union with the God who created him. Remember, man is complete, incomplete, without God. Second, a member of the body of Christ, as a member, we have a mission. And it's the second aspect of the admonition we receive on uh, Ash Wednesday. Repent and believe in the gospel. The Eucharist gives the gift of the Holy Spirit to strengthen the will and give the fortitude 
uh, to the receiver that is needed to avoid the near occasion of sin and sin itself. This grace helps the person to change his life. Oh, that word that we hate so much. And yet, to what we are called. It also offers the greater capacity to believe Christ is the Son of God and accept and believe the gospel Christ has given us as the way of life for a Christian. This then helps the believer to realize, accept, and live out his mandate to be a missionary disciple of Christ. The Eucharist nourishes for this action this other Christ, you and I, now act like Christ our Lord. We just heard Jesus washed the feet of his disciples to manifest service. The Eucharist is the sacrament of love. Love one another, but not just any kind of love. Love as I have loved you. Manifest is by being like Christ, lifted up. As he said, as I was on the cross. It's like he's saying, I gave my all, my life for you. I send you now to give yourself for the benefit of others. A great example even now is that social distancing. We may think, I don't like to do that. I don't want to do that. I can't stand doing it. Do you love God? Well, you prove it by the way you love your neighbor, Christ tells us. And we are each other's neighbor right now. We are called to love each other as he loved us totally to protect each other. This living out of our baptism, nourished by the Eucharist, is the unique way to satisfy the hungers that man and woman have for God. Oh, we disguise it and think we're hungering for something else. But Pope Francis hit the nail on the head at his Urbi et Orbe meditation. The one thing that we really crave for is God. And only when we have God in our life will we be satisfied. St. Irenaeus said this, in proportion to God's need for nothing is man's need for communion with God. In this time of the Lord's Passion, when Christ offered prayers and supplications to the Father with loud cries and tears, let us humbly beseech God that in answer to his Son's uh, reverent submission, he may in mercy hear our prayers too. that the church, the bride of Christ, may be more fully cleansed by his blood in this time of his passion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That through the blood of Christ's cross, all things in the world may be brought to peace for the sake of salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that God may grant fortitude and patience to all who through sickness or hardship have a share in Christ's passion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may all be led through the Lord's passion and cross to the glory of his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all suffering from the virus that they may be healed and comforted, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, that the Lord may admit them into his kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all those who are giving medical care and comfort to those who are ill, for all the researchers and scientists, doctors who are looking for a cure and a vaccine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Be present, O Lord, to your people at prayer, so that what they do not have, when they do not have the confidence or presumption to ask, they may obtain by the merits of your son's passion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished, 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering in his memorial as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink the blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun into its setting a perfect sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Patrick our Bishop, the order of bishops. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with, and your, with spirit. your spirit. So let us share a sign of peace now with one another. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Come 
Grant, almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so may we enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. As we continue our journey in the Triduum in Holy Week, I beg you, my brothers and sisters in faith, <clears throat> pray for one another, pray for all who are ill, pray for everyone to uh, be obedient to the uh, social distancing, pray that this plague, this scourge will leave us quickly. Pray not only for ourselves here, but pray for the whole world. Uh, we truly are, as Pope Francis said, in the same boat as the 12 were with Jesus in the storm. It was he who brought comfort. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and proclaim the gospel by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.